let's now have a look at the fifth task on the to-do list. And you'll see here on the left-hand side, it's telling us that all staff are employed by an agency which charges the staff an 8% fee on all earnings. We've got to calculate their take-home pay. We've also got to sort the information and print. Now, this tells you exactly what file to use because it's talking about printing copies of a spreadsheet. It tells us we're dealing with all staff and if you look at your files you will see you have here a spreadsheet called staffing costs. So let's have a closer look at that. So I can see here within our spreadsheet, the staffing cost spreadsheet, that we've got three sheets within it. Staff costs, you'll see there's a name, ID, grade, this is important. We've got a rota that also has the staff member name plus their ID and the hours they've worked within the rota. And we've got different pay grades with different hourly rates. So we have to calculate what the staff costs are going to be. So first of all, to calculate the hourly rate. If a person is grade four, you will see from pay grades they're going to be getting £9.85. How do we bring this information into this spreadsheet and what is it asking us to do? Well, a wee hint is if you see information like this, either horizontally or vertically with lists of information, that is indicating to you that this will be some kind of lookup. Now, in this case, if we're looking up the hourly rate, this has been set horizontally. So we are looking to do an H lookup to bring in the variety of hourly rates into the staff cost sheets. And this is how we do it. So the first thing to do is click in the cell where you want the return. It's in cell D5. Then we're going to go up to formulas and then insert function. Now I have used the H lookup recently, so it's in my list. If you haven't, go to search for function, type it in, H lookup, then press go and you'll get to the same point. If I click on OK, it brings up a function arguments box, which by the way, I can move around my screen. So the lookup value, the first thing to ask yourself is what are you looking up? Well, we are looking up grade four. So let's click on C5. If I click to the next section, table array, it's asking me, where are you going to find this information? Where's the table? Well, I do know that the table is in a separate sheet under pay grades. So I'm going to click on pay grades and then I'm going to highlight from grades one to four and include the hourly rates. Now I'm actually going to click on F4. F4, if you remember, is a quick way to, I'm calling it dollar sign it, it's dollar signing it. That will fix this table into place so that when you copy down, it will keep referring back to the grades and the hourly rates. Next thing, I'm going to click on row index column. Now, as we're looking at this, take note as if, if the grade is the first row, then the hourly rate must be the second row. So the row index number is two because the actual hourly rates is in the second row. And then you'll see here it's come up with 985. It's come up with a value which is correct actually. So we know we're on the right lines here. And because we're looking for an exact value, there's four pay grades, four exact values. We type in the word false and then we're going to press OK. And you will see there that the hourly rate 9.85 has come up and I can just double click that or click and drag and we can bring up all the hourly rates. I can see from here it's not been formatted correctly. We're missing pound signs. We're missing decimal places. So I just want to go quickly now and format that. I'm going to go back to home. It's still highlighted, of course. I go to number, click on the drop down option and I want to collect currency. And that's me got the hourly rate for all the various staff and their grades. So we now need to bring across the number of hours from the rota sheet for each employee. So let's have a look at the rota again just to remind ourselves that we've got a name, ID, 
the shifts, and then we'll see here, column G, we have got the total number of hours. This is what we're looking up to bring that into the staff costs sheet. So let's go into insert function. This time, as the information is held vertically in columns, it's a V lookup this time, click on OK. And just like the last time, we're asking ourselves, first of all, what are we looking up? Well, we could actually um, look up the name or the employee ID. It doesn't really matter, but I'll just stick to the employee ID. I'll click on that, B5. Next thing is the table array. If you remember, it's where will we find the information? Where is that table? Well, it's here in the rota sheet. So I'm just going to highlight from employee ID right the way along to um, column G total hours and let's highlight the whole table and remember we're going to click on F4, we're going to dollar sign it, we are going to fix it into place when we copy down. Now what's interesting here is if we're looking to find out the column number where total hours is kept, you'll see it's quite far away from the employee ID. In fact it is six columns along. So it's column six compared to where the column ID is. So the column index number is six and you'll see here it's come up 20 and I do remember from what I've just done it is 20 hours, that is correct. And remember the range lookup um, is an exact match so we're going to type in false and then we're going to click OK. And you'll see there we've got the total hours and it does match if we look here Angela Hume, employee ID 105, she has about 20 hours. So we've done the VLOOKUP correctly and we can just copy down and that's now us got the hourly rate and the total hours. And we're now ready to work out what is the take home pay. So if you remember from the instructions, we are told that staff are employed by an agency which charges staff 8% fee on all earnings. So we've been asked to calculate staff members' take-home pay, but less than 8% fee they're going to have to pay their agency. So we have to basically calculate hourly rate multiplied by total hours less 8%. Easiest way to do it is this equals hourly rate D5 times total hours E5 times. Now, if they're losing 8%, it means they're only getting 92% of their earnings. So if I just simply type in 92% and press enter, it will calculate it for us. There are other ways to do it, but I think that is actually the quickest way. And then we can just uh, copy that down. So that is how we calculate the take home pay. Now I'm just going to take a quick look at the bottom of this spreadsheet to see if everything is all right. And I can see actually I've got a few not applicables down here. If you remember when I was copying down, I said to you, you can either click and drag or quickly double click. I double clicked and it's actually come down to totals. And I'm just going to delete that. That doesn't make any sense for the hourly rate. I'm going to use a, it's not a look up here, to get the total number of hours. I'm just going to do a very quick auto sum to calculate that. And then I can copy that across um, onto the take home pay. So I'm just making sure that I'm formatting my spreadsheet properly. I can see actually here I'm missing a pound sign, a comma. So I want to go back to home and then to general and change it to um, currency. And I'm just double checking that I've finished everything with formatting, which has been done. One wee thing I have actually noticed with my formatting is I went to format the take home pay in pounds with decimal places and actually I'd had the previous cell highlighted so it's not 320 pounds, it's 320 hours. So I just need to quickly go back, back to uh, general, change it to number, take off the decimal places and that's us finished that bit. It also asks us to sort by grade and employee ID in descending order. So we have to do a quick sort before we finish. So I'm just going to click within my, my table here. I'm going to go to data. I'm going to go to sort. And it's asking me to sort by, well, we have to sort by grade in descending order. So that's largest to smallest and we also have to do employee ID. So we've got the first level 
If I click on Add Level, I can then change it to Employee ID and again descending means largest to smallest. Notice here as well it's ticked my data has headings it will recognize it's recognize the headings in row 4. If you didn't have that then the column would just show you know ABC. Let's click on OK and that's assorted as instructed by grade and then by employee ID. So the last thing you've been asked to do is to print off copies, one in value view, this is value view, what you're looking at right now, and also formula view. The quick way to bring up your formulas to toggle it is put your finger on the control key on the left hand side of your keyboard, keep it pressed down, then click on the shoulder key, which is the button below the escape key. That will toggle it to formula. If you do it again, control shoulder, shoulder key brings it back. It does also say to make sure it's printed on one side of A4. So this is where you might want to go to your page layout and perhaps look at your margins, look at the orientation, do a print preview. Just make sure that it will print on one page. Remember, if you do print selection and, and make it fit to page, that will work. And also, um, always pay heed to the instructions whether or not you're printing with grid lines and or row and column heading. So everything you need for printing and checking your page layout is in the page layout tab. Please also remember if you are showing your formula and you're printing it off, there's, you can, for example, you can narrow some columns but then you have to widen others. So there for the hourly rate it's not showing the full formula so I'd be stretching it out to make sure that the person reading it can see your full formula. So that's how you do task 5 of your to-do list.